Good morning, my grandchildren and friends from afar. Look what a beautiful day it is out there today. The sun is hitting it. Looks great out there. Get a little bit of a late start uh, today. Uh, going to take a look at uh, the wonderful book of Jeremiah in chapter uh, 49. This is a pretty long chapter and I was kind of um, the feeling I got after reading this chapter this morning, there's a lot of chaos going on here. There's a lot of God reckoning going on. And I think uh, before we start this uh, this story, I just want to bring it to everybody's mind that we are both sides of these coins. We are the carnal. We are the people that are being uh, destroyed and the people that are being saved all at the same time. And I think it's important to remember that one day you're you're playing the part of uh, one side of that coin, the, the the carnal state, and the next day you're you're grabbing on to the spirit. So uh, don't lose heart and when we read about all these atrocities that we bring upon ourselves, because that cross and Jesus Christ has uh, has uh, cured a lot of problems. Amen. Dear the Lord God in heaven, watch over us as we read through these scriptures, Father. And help our hearts and our minds be open, Father, so that we can receive that which you would have us receive day by day, every day, Father. We love you. Amen. With that being said, uh, 49 reads, Concerning the Amorites, Thus the Lord, uh, thus saith the Lord, Hath Israel no sons? Hath he no heir? Why then do uh, their king inherit Gad and his people dwell in his cities. He's saying here, uh, isn't these cities supposed to be for Israel? What, what's all these all these guys and coming here and taking it over by force and they're living in these cities? He's calling to these people here and letting them know, uh, you've taken something that don't belong to you, chief, and, uh, and this is what the carnal mind does. All these, uh, these, uh, these people that God is correcting, is a likeness for our own carnal things. We often take things that don't belong to us spiritually, physically, and every other way. And uh, these people are basically a, a thief in that sense. They try to take a land in cities that don't belong to them. Therefore, behold, the days come that the Lord, uh, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause an alarm of war to be heard in uh, Reba and uh, the Amorites. And it shall be a desolate heap, and her daughters shall be burned with fire, and then shall Israel uh, be heir unto them uh, that were his heirs, saith the Lord. Uh, he's going to run these old people out, and her daughters, uh, if we want to read this in the uh, carnal, we're talking about actual physical people, but your daughters and your son is uh, what comes after you. It's the later generations. It's what you produce. And uh, be burned with fire. Uh, what, this, how do, what does this mean? God is that consuming fire. And this Bible that I'm reading is the sword that you always hear the Lord talking about in these scriptures. And that fire is the revelation of Jesus Christ that burns away our carnal, our carnal uh, uh, way of thinking. So a lot of times when you read uh, about people burning with fire in this beautiful poetic sense that the Bible is written, not necessarily a bad thing. It's bad to the carnal. And when it's our carnal that's reading these scriptures, uh, it, it puts a wall there, a bridge that doesn't want to let our heart understand. But when that revelation of Jesus Christ is working in our hearts, uh, then uh, so be it. it. The understanding will come to the heart and you will realize that these daughters being burnt up is a, a way to save them because it's burning away the carnality. Amen. How, O Hezbarn, for Ai is spoiled. Cry, ye daughters of uh, Reba, gird you with sackcloth and lament and, ruin, and run uh, to and fro by the hedges for their king shall go unto captivity and his priest and his princes together uh, what who's going into captivity here this is uh this is the old carnal way of thinking 
this old world, uh, it chooses to see in the carnal because it gets to stay in its sin in the carnal. And it never really wants to achieve that uh, state of being a godly person, which is what happens when we uh, receive the Lord Jesus Christ in our spirit. But our flesh, it likes to hang on to the carnal understanding because it likes to uh, do its wrongdoing. And, uh, but uh, don't worry, it helps on the way. Wherefore, glorious thou in the valleys, thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, uh, that trusted in her treasures, saying, Who shall come unto me? Uh, this is how the carnal looks at it. Uh, she got a lot of treasures here built up, but you know what? I used to say this all the time, that the uh, deathbed, uh, the eyesight on the, the deathbed is twenty twenty, And we start to see things very clearly. And one of the things we learn on our deathbed is that new car, a bass boat, or that big shiny house, all the things we amass and spend time amassing on the world. On that deathbed, my friend, you can see it for what it is. It's all for naught. And uh, it's kind of stating here how this, uh, this attitude is of the carnal. Uh, saying, who shall come unto me? She's like, who, who can take me down? I've got it so good here. And this is also how we feel when we're young. Uh, carnal, our carnal uh, ways of seeing things is in the strongest point when we're young because we feel like we're 10 foot tall and bulletproof and you feel like you're going to live forever. But the truth is all of our lives are very fleeting and this, uh, this is a momentary uh, thing in this flesh that we all are in. Uh, when it, you get a little snow on the roof and you start getting a little age on you, uh, you start to you start to open up the books of this uh, uh, pages of this Bible a lot more, don't you? Because we start to see and understand the truth of it. That it's never about this world, this carnal state. This is just a means to get us to a beautiful, glorious state in the spirit. Amen. And God is trying to forgive us for something that's happened long ago. And this is what this uh, experience is about. God is a is a savior. God is a salvager. He is, this is a rescue mission. Amen. Behold, I will bring a fear upon thee, saith the Lord, God of hosts, from all those that be about thee. And this is how you feel when you start getting close to, to that deathbed. Now, this, uh, uh, this is, uh, and they, it's not only have to do with dying, but just when you've had a belly full of the carnal life, uh, you start to feel a lot of things around you. And yea, shall be driven out every man right forth, and none shall gather up him that is uh, that wandereth. That's a big rush here. And afterward, I will bring again the captivity of the children of Amron, saith the Lord, concerning Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh, I better read that again in uh, number six. It says, And afterward I will bring again the captivity of the children of Amram, saith the Lord. Uh, that captivity uh, in the spirit uh, can mean uh, something very different than our thought of captivity in the carnal. Amen. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Tamram is counsel perished from the prudent, is their wisdom vanished? Question mark. And I think we're all going to say this to ourselves uh, uh, at some point in our lives. Flee, yea, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of a, a Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau. Think about this for a minute. The calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. The calamity of Esau. Esau was a red man. He had red hair. He had uh, traded his, uh, his uh, inheritance for a bowl of what? Red porridge. And later, you know, every, every time we see this word red, of which Esau is very... Because Esau represented the, the firstborn. He was born first, remember? Then Jacob came. Remember Jacob tried to grab his heel like a little baby? This is all a beautiful poetic story because... Jacob knew him being the younger, he would receive that, uh, that blessing, that inheritance. Because Esau traded it away for a bowl of red porridge. What does that mean? Red is carnalism. 
Esau chose to stay in the carnal. He's here is represented by our firstborn older state that is carnal. But that later state, Jacob, it's coming. This is when we start seeking God in the spirit. Amen. And how did Jacob seek God in the spirit? He wrestled with that angel all night long. And he told that angel, when that angel said, let me go, the light's about to come. And he told that old angel, he said, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. Well, you're wrestling that angel right now, my friends. This is your angel. Angel means a messenger. It is many times translated in the word of God as messenger. There is no more truer, greater messenger than this word of God right here we're reading. And when we are, are wrestling it for understanding, now we read this book all of our lives, all through our dark stage, just as our carnal stage. And when that light starts to come, now that book says, let me go. You're almost getting there. And this is when we got to tell this book, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. And this book will bless you with the spirit, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that spiritual understanding will come. And I see, uh, where was it? Esau upon him and the time that I will visit him. Uh, he's visiting all of us in our state of, uh, of carnalism, right? If uh, grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaming grapes? And back to gleanings, what people never did pick their fields clean. They always left something for the poor. Gleanings like the edges on the outside of a field. And you left, like, say, if you had corn, you would never cut all your corn stalks down. You would leave some for the poor people. This is how we took care of the poor in the old days. And he's saying he would, uh, wouldn't you leave some for the, you know, to leave? And if thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. In other words, they won't just sit there and destroy everything to where there's nothing left for the poor. But uh, they'll, they'll wait till they have enough and then they'll move along. Until they have been enough. Uh, but I have made Esau bear. There's not going to be any uh, spiritual uh, haven uh, for the carnal. Until we come out of this carnal, this carnal state, uh, we're going to be bare spiritually. I have uncovered his secret place, and he shall not be able to hide himself. This is when you feel naked. Remember that fall of Adam and Eve? <clears throat> Suddenly they felt naked when they started listening to the devil. Uh, the, this uh, devil, uh, is, this is what our carnality listens to. It's what it's born in, um, in, the, uh, in the devil's ways and the devil's will and desire for this existence. He wants to pull you away from the Spirit of God. Uh, they were naked then, and now is a, and they shall be able to hide themselves. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Uh, is not why, because we're staying in that carnal state, but don't worry, he helps on the way. Jesus accomplished a lot on that cross. This is why you see in these old movies they make about Jesus, the passion, and all those uh, wonderful movies about Christ. You see that devil start to raise up his head and scream in terror as that cross, as the work of that cross is accomplished because he knows he's losing his business. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive. And let thy widows trust in me. This is our, the later states. What's your children? This is the fruits and benefits of what's coming out of you. And this is your soul that's going to be born. Your soul is a child of the carnal state. It is going to be born out of that firstborn state. And you and the, the widows, who is uh, that old carnal man that is dying, uh, you're leaving that to God. God's working on all of us. Amen. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup, have assuredly drunken. Same thing with that uh, picking that fruit off of that tree. That we like to uh, visualize Eve taking an apple off a tree. Wasn't no apple. We were talking about knowledge off of the tree of uh, uh, in that uh, in that old wonderful book of uh, Genesis. And uh, here and we're not supposed to drink, but yet we drunk. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? No, there's punishment coming. There's reckoning coming. Don't worry. Jesus took every stripe uh, on his back. My God, praise God. Amen. Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. 
This is, uh, makes me think of the quail again. Oh, you wanted to drink from that cup. Well, you're going to drink like uh, you've never drunk before. Because what happens when we do this, when God makes us serve the, uh, the king of uh, Babylon, uh, because we were all taking our eyes off of God's ways and putting our eyes on small g God's ways. And on them small g gods, that could be anything in our life that we put before God. Could be sports, entertainment, could be our hobbies, could be our wives or our husbands, could be our children, our family. We should put nothing before God. God should come first and foremost in our lives. And when we don't do that, we've got a hard lesson coming. So here, they're going to drink of this cup. For I have sworn by myself, saying the Lord, that the Borzera shall become a desolation. This is another state of uh, carnality, Borzera. A reproach, a waste, and a curse. And all cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Uh, this is the outcome of our carnal quandrings, our carnal lives. They're a waste. Don't worry, we're both sides of that coin. We've been given grace sufficient enough. Uh, just hang in there. I know the reading these types of stories is hard on the human mind, but it's wonderful on the heart. Amen. I have heard a rumor from the Lord. And uh, an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up to the battle. Who is her? That old uh, wicked woman that sits on that back of that beast on those waters. This is the church state. This is the carnal church state that most of us spend most of our lives in. Rise up against it. This is that, uh, that uh, vehicle, that, uh, 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 that beast system. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. What men? Carnal men. The tribulation, uh, the, uh, the, tri the terribleness hath deceived thee and the pride of thine heart. O thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock and holdest the height of the hill. Now, you know what I said about hills a few uh, episodes back. Uh, these mountains and hills are things that are put between us and God. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as an eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Lord. Uh, we got it. This is haughtiness, haughtiness, this lofty state. We put ourselves up. But we think we're all that in a bag of chips. We build these huge, monstrous churches, these huge, giant uh, tabernacles across the land and it's the biggest churches you've ever seen and most of them are so carnal that they are raised up high they got all the money the big jet airplanes that carry the preachers around all the one mansion after another mansion that those uh, those preachers and those teachers in those churches are on all of them justifying in their carnal heart <clears throat> that they need this and that they deserve this and do blah 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 this is all the same thing that Judas did. And when we do this, you become a Judas priest. You become the man who holds the purse bag and pays for the food for the people as they're traveling and takes care of all the money things. Uh, yeah, if you want to be the one who handles the purse and handles the money and uh, raise yourself high like an eagle and hide in the cliff rocks, the rocks is a likeness for Christ. But they're hiding in the cliffs and the overhangs and the shadows. Yeah, it doesn't fare too well for you. Come out of that state for anybody that I... Uh, uh, this voice may reach somebody. Anybody that's acquired a big, huge church and money has become your Lord and it has become your king. Get out of that as uh, quick as you can and uh, run to the true God. Jesus didn't have four walls... Uh, to, to house himself in. He didn't have a pillow to lay his head uh, in the carnal. Jesus' treasures were all spiritual. Amen. Jesus was kept himself stripped and bare of all earthly comforts. Uh, you don't need a, a quote and chapter to tell you that. The whole book is constantly telling you that. He was like a vagabond. He roamed this earth without a home. He was the poor. This is why he came and thought so much of the poor. He was the poor. He kept himself poor. Why? 
because he wanted to be humble to God. He didn't want mammon to get in between him and uh, the spirit, his father, the Lord of which, who he was. Uh, I know that sounds confusing, but uh, when he was in the flesh, he was the son of God. His spirit was very much God himself. He is the word that was there in the beginning. He's here now and he's going to be there until all time forever. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. Can you see the plagues today? Turn on your TV for five minutes and watch the news. You're watching one plague after the other. And I'm not just talking about sickness plagues. Your politics is a plague. Your honesty is a plague. Your news media is a plague. Your food sources is a plague. We are filled with plagues in this carnal state. Amen. As in the overthrow of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor uh, cities, their neighboring cities thereof, saith the Lord, No man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. That when I read son of man, uh, I think the Lord Jesus Christ, but uh, you can take this either way you want. But to me, this is a spiritual man. They're not going to dwell on this. Why? Because it's a mess. Uh, this is why I try to keep myself separated as much as I can from the news of the day and from the big cities. I, I move deep into the country, and uh, I think uh, uh, we all have to get out of this noise. This Sodom and Gomorrah is a likeness for our modern day cities today. The big cities do something to a person's outlook. And uh, the more deeper you can get in the country, the better. But someday, even the country will be cities. Amen. So uh, if we need to find that dwelling within the Lord, to put that Lord in our hearts. Now, this ain't to say that if you live in a big city, you can't be close to God. You sure can. Uh, but uh, I, I choose to live in the country for obvious reasons. Uh, Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan against the habitation of the strong. We're talking about the old King Nebuchadnezzar. I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? Question mark. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he's got his coming. Don't worry. For who is like me? The king, it's not King Nebuchadnezzar who's really uh, taking dominion over you. It's not really Babylon. It's the Lord. Who is like the Lord? The Lord's making all this happen so that we can learn enough to come to him. Amen. Through Jesus Christ and that cross. And who will appoint me the time? Nobody can appoint God to nothing. God appoints himself. Everything is being controlled. God is in control. Amen. And who is that shepherd? that will stand before me. Who is that shepherd that's going to stand before God? There's only one shepherd I know of that will stand before God and God will be pleased with, and that is Jesus Christ, amen, himself. All the other shepherds, the people teaching and preaching and get in trouble with those big, huge churches I'm talking about, they cannot stand, amen. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom, and his uh, he proposed that he hath uh, proposed against the inhabitants of uh, Timon. Surely, another one of the uh, carnal states, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their inhabitants desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fail, and the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. There's that red again. Think about what I was telling you about red and Esau. This is all going to, all through the flesh, all through earthly man. This noise is heard. We know there's a voice, a small, still voice in our hearts. And we know that small, still voice is telling us something is not right. We have put our eggs in the wrong basket. We have bet on the wrong horse. We are doing something wrong when we read this Bible. We need to read this Bible for it to be writ on our hearts in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Behold, he shall come up and fly as an eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart 
of a woman in her pangs. We keep getting back to this woman in her pangs. This is a woman having a child. This is a thing being birthed. This is the birth of a new thing. This is your spirit. Amen. This is your soul. This is your spiritual understanding. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ is when we start to see these writings in the spirit, not just with our carnal brains. The carnal brains is a bad bet. It's our eggs in the wrong basket. Why? Because the brain goes away of the flesh. It will rot. All the information that is stored in your brain, all your memories, everything that you know that's stored in your brain is going to be lost. The only thing that is going to be saved is the spiritual things. And when you come to that uh, Lord Jesus Christ and spirit, all this information that has been uh, teleported from your brain to the heart and spirit of God, Jesus Christ, that will be saved. It's like, uh, to use an etymology we were using yesterday about thumb, some guy said uh, we're basically like a thumb drive and we're being downloaded. Uh, your, your body is like that thumb drive. And someday that thumb drive is going to be lost. But that thumb drive is plugged into, let's say, your, your laptop. Well, everything will be saved in that laptop. This is a, this is a uh, I'm not saying we're computers, but what I'm telling you is this is a good way to understand what happens to our souls. God will only allow what he wants to come through that thumb drive to the laptop. Amen. And if we have sin, if we had mud on our boots and we're trying to come in our mama's house, don't mama say, hey, you better get them boots off before you come in my house. Well, guess what? God is very much like that when we come into his house. He don't want us tracking up, stinking up the place. Why? He's got a nice place. So and only for us to get us cleaned up to where we can be worthy to go be back with God, we're going to have to get that mud off of our boots. And uh, remember, Jesus was all about the feet washing. Amen. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is compounded in our, uh, our, our, uh, our pad. For they are heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. Uh, this is what it feels like when that spirit of revelation is coming on. You become very faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. Most likely, talking about that Red Sea again. There's sorrow in that, in that sea because the sea is always a likeness. Where does that beast come out of? The sea, right? Where does that horse sit on that beast's back rising up out of those waters? It's the sea, right? This is our carnal state. This is the matrix, what we're born into. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee. This is a, what your carnal state's doing. It's in a shambles. It's in a mess. And fear have seized on her. This is a good thing. Amen. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. Here that is again. A woman in travail, why? There's a birth taking place, amen? How is the city of praise not left? The city of my joy. Therefore, her young men shall fall with her, shall fall in her streets, and all of the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. This is your carnal man. Now they're going by the wayside. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the places of Ben Hadadad. God is that consuming fire. And now it's within the wall of your carnal self, and it's consuming that carnal. Concerning Kader and concerning the kingdom of Hazar, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite. Thus saith the Lord, Arise, yea, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. Anytime I see east and west, I think about that river uh, 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 Jordan. Uh, uh, Matthew Henry uh, brings up in his, uh, his helps over there, it's talking about east. I think it was Pakistan, one of those, uh, Persia or something, one of those uh, uh, states. But uh, east is the main thing here. And I, that always brings me, when I think of east and west, uh, in the east is before we get to the promised land. When we look across that river Jordan, that's when we cross over to the west bank over there. This is where the promised land is. And uh, what we're trying to do, if you listen to many old, if you like music, Bob Dylan songs, he's always talking about the east and west. And uh, uh, these, most of these, uh, the best songwriters 
were very much a students of the Old Testament, and they were always interested in these uh, deeper spiritual meanings. And you could hear a lot of that in the, the music today. So, but to rise from the east to the west, to cross over from that river Jordan is easy, is to become east a uh, carnal and uh, go to the west where it is spiritual. That's where your promised land is. Amen. There, ten, in the back of your Bibles, they got the maps. And, you, the, and in those maps, they'll show you one, the, uh, the uh, path that was taken by the people as they were leading Egypt. And you'll see how they actually skipped from the west side of the, uh, of the Jordan, went way down south, and then they came back up on the east side, and then they had to cross over River Jordan. Think about it. Their tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains and all their vessels and their camels, and they shall cry unto them, Fear is on us every side. These people can't even fight their so frightened. Flee, get out. Far off, dwell deep, O ye inhabitants of Hazar, saith the Lord, of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, have taken counsel against you and hath conceived a purpose against you. Arise, get you up into uh, the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars, which dwell alone. And their camels shall be a booty. In other words, they're taking these camels, but they're going to leave them with their lives. And camels is something that carried you. This is something that, uh, this was your car of the day, was your camel. This was your mode of transportation. Spiritually, think about what your mode of transportation is. Uh, taking it to be a booty. And the multitude of their cattle, a spoil. And I will scatter unto you all winds, uh, and I will scatter unto all winds them that are in the outmost corners, and I will bring their calamity from all sides, therefore saith the Lord. And Hazar shall be a dwelling for, a, uh, uh, for dragons, and a desolate, desolation forever. There uh, shall dragons, this is your carnal state, there shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. There's no spiritual man. There's no spiritual son of man. This is a, this is a carnal state that we all woke up and find ourselves in. Amen. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam. Boy, well, this is a long chapter, isn't it? Uh, in the uh, beginning of the region, Zedekiah, king of Judea, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam. Elam was known for their bow shooters. Those guys' strength was they were archers. And uh, he's going to break that. This, this is what you trust in. All the things you trust in when you're in the carnal state, the good Lord's going to break it. The chief of their might. And upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heavens, and I will, and, and will scatter them toward all those winds and there shall be no nation, whether the outcast of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword, hello sword, after them till I have consumed them. This sword is going to consume your carnal. Until there is a good spirit there. till there is something that the good Lord won't have to turn his head away from. Why? Because we've got mud on our boots, my friends. And I will set my throne in Elam. And I will destroy from thence the king of the princes, say, their king and their princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days. Hello. Listen to this. This is important. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Look, what a long and powerful. I'm going to try not to comment too much on the end of this because it's so long. Uh, God's leaving hope. That uh, captivity, he's bringing back again. Uh, we're going to be captive to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be... Paul brings it up in the New Testament. Uh, we, uh, he's, he was a prisoner to God's love. 
you know, when we come out of this uh, this carnal state, and we start to see things in uh, in a uh, a spiritual way, we start to see with our hearts. That's a good captivity to be captive to God in that way. Uh, God uh, is only collecting and saving what He loves. And God is playing a very hard hand here with a bunch of very hard heads. We use hard hands against hard heads to make soft butts, as Mom used to say. Hard head makes a soft uh, butt, let's for a better word to use there. But Mom used to say that all my life. Hard head makes a soft ice. I'll use the word ice like you put ice in a soft drink because you know what I'm, I'm getting at. Hard head makes a soft ice. Uh, this was a, the, what her parents told her, and this is old wisdom from uh, if we if we want to be hard headed and uh, not do well, uh, then that whipping would come on our butts, and uh, we uh, we learned something as kids. Uh, it wasn't foolproof, but it worked. It kept us out of prison and the tattoos for the most part. And uh, with that being said, grandchildren, uh, as hard headed as we want to be toward God is. Whatever it takes for us to get turned around, God loves you enough that He is willing to let you bash your head against the wall or punch your hands against an old oak tree somewhere in a drunken state, as I myself have done in my physical state uh, many years ago, until punish myself until I come to the point where I realize I need Jesus Christ. And the perception that I have of Jesus Christ back when I was a young man, it was warped and it was, uh, it was deluded by the plastic churches that you always hear me talk about, uh, this state of people that makes religion about money. They have a way of giving us a very false perception of who and what Jesus Christ is. We spend our first half of our lives trying to build that, like an onion, you try to put these, these wraps around and you try to create this perception. Then you spend the last half of your life peeling away those onion things that you built with your own perception over the years so you could get to the truth which was there in the beginning when you started in the very center of that onion and that was the, the true spirit and love of Jesus Christ and we spend a lot of times in our earlier stage covering that up and we spend the latter times of, of our lives trying to dig that out and try to get back to the truth which is God loves you and anytime you read something in the, this Bible which if you read this in the carnal You'd be thinking God was an old hard hand at this, at this point, never realizing that God is loving you enough to do what it takes to bring us around to that, uh, that wonderful cross where we can be forgiven and join back with Him. I love you. This is why I read this uh, Bible uh, every morning. And this is why, hopefully the good Lord let me read it every morning. And uh, this is why, look at this thing, it's a mountain. Every word in this Bible is a step up this mountain. It's a suckling off of these breaths, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And every, every word we read is a trek going up a mountain, that mountain of God. And, uh, and this is why I read this, uh, because I love you. And God loves you too. Don't ever forget that. I hope everybody out there has a great day. And if you've enjoyed the study as long as it was, and as long as winded as the old man can be, and if you've enjoyed it, come on back and take another read with us, won't you? Everybody out there, have a great day.